and next we will go over the longitudinal control. What is longitudinal control in a vehicle con context? It is, uh, it is controlling the speed or torque of, of the vehicle with uh, the gas pedal being the input of the system. And so what we're trying to do is to achieve a, a reference torque or speed, most commonly speed, because it's an easier value to interpret, and, and then trying to tune the controller in a way that the actual, here in blue, is as close as possible to the reference value that we have set, that we want to achieve. And here we will go over the PID controller and feed forward PID controller. A PID controller is the most common, I would say, uh, a controller type used in, in any, any, any system. And PID comes from proportional, integral and derivative uh, controller. So proportional gain, integral gain and derivative gain. So to put them sort of uh, to summarize them in in a, just the one just one word proportional means the mul multiplied error so it is directly proportional to the error then a cumulative error is the integral gain so it's the area under the curve kind of a calculation and then derivative gain is the changes in error times this gain uh, we will go over these one by one. And so we have three different parameters that we can change, KP, KI, and KD of the respected uh, error terms. Not, well, the error t term itself is the same, but the respected uh, portions of PID controller. So proportional gain is directly proportional to the current error. So here, if we look at this time t over here, just any example will do. And the actual value is this green line here, and red is the reference that we want to achieve. So there is an error between these two, uh, which has some uh, magnitude. So this error over here is the same as this error in this example. Then we have some constant value, some, some constant uh, uh, gain we call the constant value is called a gain that you set beforehand and will not change tr during the operation of the system you can change it beforehand usually and this is the most easy to inter interpret of what it does to the system uh, uh, if you try to uh, make the key kp gain larger or smaller you will immediately see the uh, behavior in the system. It's the easiest to see what happens. And it's easy to understand what it is. And then we have the integral gain, which is the cumulative error. So now it's not the thing that it's is being multiplied with our gain is not this error at time t, but it's the the sum of of uh, the difference between the actual value and the reference value. So it's this whole area. And integral gain is especially good to get rid of steady state errors. Since if we look at here at the towards the end of this uh, situation, the the difference between actual and uh, and reference value is small. But when time goes forward, then the area between these two gets much larger and then the uh, integral get, uh, term. So we have an integral gain, but then the integral term is the multi uh, multiplied uh, cumulative error times the gain that we have set. So with this integral term, we can get rid of steady state errors as the cumulative error gets much larger uh, during the time, uh, dur as time goes forward, even though 
a particular error at time t is relatively small. Then lastly we have derivative gain which is the change change in the error times our gain. And so here I have tried to portray what the error uh, change in the error looks like. So how much there is uh, so here in the beginning the error gets la larger and larger until we reach approximately this point and then it starts to get smaller. So that's that's uh, what I have portrayed here with this error uh, continuous thing. And so then the uh, then the value is the change in error. Oh, yeah. So so this is the error uh, during the entire time. So I have tried to get this this area over here in in this uh, beige or brown curve, and then the change in this error is the delta x uh, uh, delta y divided by delta x, and so then then we get the change in the error, and then we have the uh, gain k d to um, tune how much we want to have this derivative gain. And and this is the hardest to sort of uh, wrap your head around, so don't feel stressed if you don't understand it completely straight away. But what you need to know is that the derivative term acts as a, a, a damper. So it tries to get rid of small oscillations since it's getting rid of... Uh, it, it tries to get rid of small uh, sudden changes in your system tries to avoid those so that is the definition of a damper or uh, yeah a damper and then so that was the traditional uh, PID controller with proportional integral and derivative uh, terms then we can add a feed forward uh, sort of a plug-in to this system so the, the traditional PID controller is this entire system pro portrayed here, but this uh, blue lines and this feed forward box over here, this is the only thing that's being added. And what we're doing here is that we're, we're adding the reference value to the controller uh, signal and the feed forward uh, block has its own gain so how much do you want this reference to influence uh, the control signal well that that sounds very theoretical but um, to put it into a better uh, vehicle context is that at slower speeds the controller uh, of uh, a car the speed controller doesn't need to be that aggressive when you're driving really slowly in a parking lot but then if you want to accelerate at uh, from 100 kilometers per hour to 120 kilometers per hour, most likely uh, the controller needs to be more predictive, more aggressive. So then we can take into account what is the target value and increase the aggressiveness of the control signals. Uh, this is a way to uh, have the same PID controller gains but then still have a little bit different behavior in different reference speeds. And this could be, this is just one example of a system. Uh, so in any system where there's inertia, it behaves very differently in, in different speeds. So this is what we try to do with this feed forward plugin over here. And it's very commonly used with the PID controller.